I'm gonna be honest here. When it comes to my work, if I were forced to choose between my laptop and my iPhone, I would absolutely choose my laptop. This is where the majority of my high quality, high intensity work gets done. That being said, my iPhone has become a bigger part of my workflow in recent months, and it's definitely a big part of my lifestyle. So given that, and the fact that you guys have been asking me for an updated what's on my iPhone video, since I did one, I think about three years ago and haven't really talked about it since then, I figured we should revisit the topic. And the first thing that I'm going to mention here is that my home screen really hasn't changed in the two and a half years since I did that last video. I'm still using the four folders at the top of the screen, work, play, go, and sift, which is where I keep everything except for the most important apps that I use most often in my workflow. So let's just go through the apps here. There's a couple that are definitely not all that interesting like clock and uh, Safari and messages. So I'm not gonna talk too much about those, but the first one we are going to look quickly at is Notion. So this is the app I have been looking for for a really long time because it is the Evernote replacement that I have always wanted. I'm a big fan of Evernote. Uh, I definitely still use it for certain things, but for a long time, Evernote has been lacking some features that I have really been wanting, such as markdown support, such as collaborative editing in real time, and many other features that I've just really been wanting. Uh, and no other app really could fit the bill either because I am both a Windows and a Mac user, and I need the app to be available on the iPhone. So I've been stuck on Evernote for basically all of my research, scripting, and many other needs until I found Notion. Notion fits the bill for basically everything that I want to do when it comes to writing videos, when it comes to organizing a lot of my work-related stuff, because it does all the stuff that Evernote doesn't do. It lets me write in Markdown. It lets me use databases like Airtable or like Excel. And it also lets me collaborate with my team in real time. So this definitely earned a place on my home screen. Next up is Pocket. So this is a great app for saving articles on the web that you want to read later. And the great thing about this app is it can actually save articles for offline reading automatically. So if I come across an article on the web, I don't have time to read it. I can save it to my Pocket. My phone will download it. And then if I'm on a plane or if I just find myself with a bit of downtime, I can open it, I can read those articles at my own convenience, and I don't have to worry about the internet being available. Next up, we've got Google Calendar. This has been a mainstay on my home screen for many years, and I definitely don't see it leaving anytime soon. And I do have a video on how exactly I use that. So if you are curious, I'm going to have that in the description down below. And next to that, we have Google Drive, which I have basically switched over to almost entirely from Dropbox. Now, I think Dropbox and Drive are pretty identical in terms of most features, but the reason reason we switched over to Drive is that we use the Google Docs and Sheets apps quite a lot. And uh, I actually think Drive is a better option for students as well because they have a $2 per month plan that gets you 100 gigabytes. Whereas with Dropbox, I believe you have to go straight up to that $10 per month plan to get the terabyte if you outgrow their free tier, which many people will. All right, moving down to the second row of apps here. First, we have Tide, which is my favorite Pomodoro app. And if you haven't heard of the Pomodoro technique, essentially it is a productivity technique where you set a timer for 25 minutes. And during that 25 minutes, you do absolutely nothing but one task that you have decided to work on. Now, there are a lot of Pomodoro apps out there on the App Store. This is definitely not your only choice, but it is my favorite one because it actually plays ambient music or rain or nature noises while the timer is going. Next up, we have my to-do list mainstay, Todoist. I've been using this for quite a long time. Now, I actually use an app called Asana for a lot of my professional to-do work, but I find the Asana app on the iPhone to be kind of a pain to use, so I generally stick to using that on the desktop. With Todoist, I'll often build packing lists for if I'm traveling, or I think the most frequent use case for this app is actually our grocery list. So anytime me or my girlfriend run out of something in the kitchen, we can just tell our Amazon Echo to put it on our shopping list, and the Echo app actually has an integration with Todoist. Its shopping list can uh, sync with Todoist, so whenever we tell it to put something on the shopping list, it's gonna show up on Todoist as well. And that brings us over to an app called Front, which is my email app of choice. Now there are a ton of email apps out there, just as there are a ton of to-do list apps out there. Front is specifically a team-based email app. And I use this now because I actually have somebody who helps me go through my main thomas at collegeinfogeek.com email address just to help me save time. And I didn't wanna give them access to my Gmail inbox. I didn't wanna give them a password. So the great thing about Front is you can actually create a shared inbox and then you can assign team members to specific emails. Another really nice feature of this app is you can actually have comment conversations within any email thread without 
actually replying to the person who emailed. So if the person going through my email has a question, they're like, I don't know how to deal with this kind of a question, this kind of an email, I can tell them, they can start getting smarter over time, and that actually saves me a lot of time in the long run. Now, if you are not running a team, I don't really recommend Front, since it's about 15 bucks per month per team member. So if you are just a solo person wanting to find an email app, I would recommend either the default mail app on iOS or the Gmail app. Unfortunately, there's not an app that can make lattes. Next up, we got Twitter and Instagram. Not a whole lot to say about Twitter and Instagram other than the fact that I am on them and I'm especially active on Instagram. So if you have not followed me on either platform yet, I am Tom Frankly on both of them and I will have links in the description down below. And uh, I will especially encourage you to follow me on Instagram because I will be doing a lot more content on IGTV, which just launched as well as the stories and the normal feed. Next up, we have one of my absolute favorite apps in the world, Habitica. This this is my habit tracker of choice. It is the subject of one of my very first videos on this channel, and it essentially gamifies habit building. You actually get a little character, and as you check off your daily habits every single day, you get experience points, you level up, you can go on quests. And my favorite part of the app is that you can actually team up with other people put them in your party, and then go on quests together. And the best part about this is if you don't do your habits on a certain day, you're gonna take damage, but your friends' characters in your party will take damage as well. So there's some nice accountability built into the app. And speaking of accountability, one way that I keep myself accountable with my daily habits is I actually post a screenshot of my habit streaks every week on my Instagram story. So there's another reason to follow. All right, next up we have Strava, which is an amazing app for cyclists and runners who want to track their stats and get better over time. I am not a runner, but I am a cyclist. And right now my goal, at least for the summer, is to cycle 50 miles every single week. So I use Strava to track that, basically just bring my phone with me on each bike ride. And it can show you where you went. It gives you kind of a map view of your entire route. You can actually pre-build routes and then have it give you directions if you want to uh, go on a specific route in your city. And it gives you tons of stats, including your average speed, your distance traveled, uh, your elevation change, all kinds of great stuff. Now, in addition to Strava, I do have one other fitness-related app on my home screen, which is called FitBod. Now, this is the app that I use to track my lifting stats whenever I go to the gym. There are tons of these out here, but the reason I selected FitBod is it is one of the only apps out there that actually integrates with Strava. And uh, the reason that I wanted to do that is I want Strava to be kind of like a central hub for all of my workout data. So every time I go to the gym and I track my fitness stats with FitBod, it ports that data over to Strava and it shows up in my feed along along with my cycling routes. In addition to that Strava integration, FitBot is pretty cool because it actually has some artificial intelligence built into it that can uh, use the data you give it to generate workouts for you. So if you're the kind of person who wants to get some variety into your gym schedule and you don't wanna build your own manually structured workout program, then this can be a pretty cool app to use. That being said, it does have a monthly subscription cost. There is absolutely no free tier. So if you are looking for something that is free, I would look into something like Fitocracy instead. Fitocracy is a little bit like Habitica, has some gamified elements, but it's also free and it is just a great way to track your workout stats. Next up, Google Maps. Not a whole lot to say about that. It's Google Maps, but the one after that is pretty interesting. Scanbot has been on my phone for quite a while because it makes keeping track of my receipts and other documents really, really easy. As a business person, I have to keep all of my receipts for tax reasons, but I don't want to be shoving them into a folder and having to keep them physically at all. And I also don't want to have to take out a picture or use a scan or do something that they did back in the 1980s. So with ScanBot, you can actually just point your phone at any document. It will automatically detect where the document is and it will take a scan of it, then automatically upload it to basically wherever you want. In my case, Evernote. And beyond just receipts, another great use case for ScanBot, if you're a student, would be to scan your notes and send them to Evernote. Because since Evernote has optical character recognition, you could handwrite your notes in class, send them to an Evernote notebook and make them searchable. All right, next up we have Slack, which in my opinion, is probably the best team communication app out there that exists. We've also got Audible, which is where I personally get all of my audiobooks. And I would say that audiobooks actually make up about half of my quote unquote reading time. And we have Snapseed. So because I am using Instagram a lot more often now, I'm also finding myself editing photos on my phone. And I'm actually gonna talk about Snapseed and splice the app right next to it kind of together. So Snapseed is just a more capable Instagram editing tool, I would say. Instagram has editing tools, but Snapseed has better editing tools. So I use that for a lot of the photos that I post on Instagram. And uh, Splice is what I use to edit Instagram stories. So if you guys see me playing guitar in an Instagram story, I definitely didn't put the hand 
hands-free mode on and get a perfect take in 15 seconds. I probably recorded for two or three minutes at least, and then I bring the video into splice. I can zoom in, I can add little edits to it. Uh, it's just a little bit better of an editor with more capabilities than the standard iOS Photos app. We've also got an app called Guitar Tuna on here, which is a guitar tuner. So I do have a real tuner on my good guitar, but I also have a cheap guitar that sits on a stand in my living room. It's really easy to pick up and play at all times. And uh, I don't have a tuner on that. I also don't have tuners on guitars at friends' places that I like to pick up and play sometimes. So having a guitar tuner on my home screen is just really convenient. All right, so we got Clock, we have Safari, we have Messages. All of those are boring. You probably know what all of those do. Uh, this app right here is called Pocket Casts. So this is my podcast player of choice. I know that iOS has a built-in podcasts app that does actually work quite well, but I've been using Pocket Casts for many years and they keep upgrading it, keep adding new features. And I really like how your main podcasts screen that shows all the shows that you're subscribed to is just this really cool looking mosaic of shows there. So I keep using this one, though if you don't want to pay for a podcast app, and I don't blame you, I would just use the default one. And of course, if you were getting into podcasts and you were looking for shows to subscribe to, I actually have two of my own, the College Info Geek podcast and Listen Money Matters, which is a personal finance podcast, and I'll have those linked in the description down below. And last but not least, on the home screen here, we have Spotify. I'm sure all of you know what Spotify does, but the one thing that I will mention on here is that I've been building out a few playlists that I like to share with you guys. So I do have a Spotify version of my Ultimate Study Music playlist along with a Work Vibes playlist that is not really quite tailored for studying, but is tailored for just getting work done, work that doesn't require a whole lot of intense focus or creativity. And I also have my workout playlist on Spotify. Now, one app that's not on my home screen on this phone that I do wanna talk about is one called Frame.io because I've just recently started working with an editor in my videos and this app is making my life so much easier because it enables just incredible collaboration with video editors. And since I will be hiring an animator for my channel at some point in the near future as well, it's about to get even more useful. And speaking of animators, I know that I am definitely not the only person out there who is looking for one. I know lots of businesses and YouTubers who are looking to add animators to their team, so this is a great skill set to learn in 2018. And luckily, it's actually a skill set that you can pretty easily learn on your own. And a great place to start would be this motion graphics course over on Skillshare, which was actually created by one of the senior motion designers at the Kurskasat channel here on YouTube. Skillshare is also just a great place to learn lots of other skills, from marketing to web development to photography. They've got over 20,000 courses in their library, most of which have hands-on projects that you can use to build your skills actively and and submit for feedback within the class. And Skillshare is also a lot more affordable than most of the other online learning platforms out there with unlimited access to the library costing about as much as a Netflix subscription, but of course, a lot more useful. What's best, you can actually get a two month free trial with unlimited access to their platform by going to the link in the description down below and signing up. And doing so will also help support this channel. So if you wanna start improving your skill set today, whether it's in animation or in anything else, definitely give that link a click and sign up. And I do wanna give a big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and being a big supporter of this channel. If you guys enjoyed this video, a like is definitely appreciated. You can also subscribe right there if you don't want to miss out on future videos. Otherwise, you can click right here for one additional video on this channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.